This video is brought to you by Dashlane. Hey guys, so today I will be showing you around what's on my MacBook Pro. A lot of college students have been asking me in the comments what apps do I use for my creative work, what applications do I use for coding, and just in general, what should I have on my Mac if I'm going to college. Just to answer a quick thing too, you definitely don't need a MacBook Pro if you're trying to be like a computer science student or if you're just going to college. I was just fortunate enough that my parents didn't mind buying me a Mac. So yeah, let's get to the video and I can show you what apps I use on my MacBook Pro. So I'm first just going to go through the applications I use for school for CS. On Mac, we use Terminal, which is like the command line tool that we use, you know, for running programs and things like that. So you can see here, I actually customized my Terminal background to be a Skyrim night picture, which I think looks pretty cool. And if I LS here, you can see all the folders that I keep on my Mac. So I just divvy up things by my classes. So all the labels with CS and a number, those are all my separate CS classes that I took. And then other than that, you can see things like film, web design, and my creative cloud files for Adobe, which I'll show you guys later. All right, so I actually use a couple of code editors depending on what I'm working on. And so one of my favorite ones I actually picked up last year is VS Code or Visual Studio. This is just one of the websites I made for when I was staffed for a class. It just had links to like resources and it's pretty simple. You can see that each different type of file has its own icon so I can differentiate between a JavaScript file and a markup like HTML. I think it's pretty nice. You can also do a lot of plugins if you want to use things like React. There's a lot of plugins you can use where you just type in commands on VS code and it'll be doing a lot of things for you instead of you having to type out all the steps on your terminal. In my Dana Life Software Engineer intern video at Toyota, you can see in some of these clips I was using VS Code. Some people thought I was using Atom. And you're kind of right, I guess. I was just using VS Code with an Atom theme. I think that's a pretty nice combination. Atom uses a lot of different colors which are very apparent so it's pretty easy to differentiate what type of variables you have in your code. So the next code editor that I use, which a lot of y'all probably already know, is Sublime. This was the first one I ever used. I coded my first website on Sublime. It is a little bit messy. I just had one markup file that's long as hell. And another application I like to use, or at least back in the day, was GitHub Desktop. It already tracks like your changes in your file. So in this example, I just added a period in one of my paragraphs because I just forgot to add a period. You can see that there. And yeah, it's really easy to commit and make a change and push it immediately. So the last code editor or IDE in this case that I like to use is IntelliJ or just like any of JetBrains' products like for Python, they have PyCharm. I first started using IntelliJ because for our data structures class, it was heavily suggested that we use it for our projects. And ever since then, I really like it. You can run tests and load up a terminal on IntelliJ. There's a lot of integrations with Docker and things like that. Just what we're seeing here was a project I had for my databases class, pretty big, but with IntelliJ, it was pretty easy to sort through what I wanted. And running tests was very simple as we can see here. Like I mentioned it, how I use it and work. If you go to my recent video from this summer, I just in some of these clips, as we can see here, I'm just coding up some stuff on IntelliJ. All right, so those are the main applications on my Mac that I use for coding. And before we go on next to the applications I use for my creative stuff, I just want to take some time to thank today's sponsor, Dashlane. So Dashlane is a platform that allows you to save and autofill login information, personal information, and things like that. It has a built-in VPN, so you can browse safely on unsecured Wi-Fi networks, and it even has dark web monitoring. As a content creator, I love that I can store all of my data safe using Dashlane. You can store your stuff on Google Chrome, you know, with the autofill. But if your Gmail account gets hacked, like all that information gets hacked too. Like I remember back in like middle school, uh, I used to use the same password for all my things. My email got hacked. Next thing you know, my RuneScape got hacked. My real story account got hacked and stupid stuff like that. And nowadays, it's really hard to keep track of all the different passwords I use for all my services and websites I use. So with Dashlane, it keeps track of my login information that while also keeping it secure. And so as we can see here, I'm using the desktop app. It's really nice. It provides an integration where you can immediately sync up all the stuff you have saved on Chrome, but now it has an extra layer of protection. So Dashlane is completely free. You can actually get 30 days of Dashlane premium for free, and there's no commitment at all to purchase the premium version. The only difference between the free and the premium version is that the premium version also provides a VPN service so that if you're working at like a coffee shop or somewhere public that where you don't trust the network, you have an extra layer of security, and it also provides you dark web monitoring if you're into that type of stuff. And so once again, I just want to thank Dashlane for sponsoring this video you can get 10% off using my code edward if you're interested in dashlane premium and you can also try out premium for free for 30 days with no commitment at all all right so for the creative stuff i actually use all of adobe's products and this is because at cal we actually get adobe cc for free as a student before coming to berkeley for video editing i was just using sony vegas uh torrent versions but don't tell anyone that i can just show you an example workflow of how i edit this is the project file of my day in the life of a san francisco intern i'm actually too lazy to learn photoshop so i just make my thumbnails on premiere I'm not too organized.
you can see on the left side with like all my files, I just drag in everything like individually. The layers, I try to differentiate it with one layer for adjustment layers for like color correction, like one layer for text and things like that. And then as you can see in the blue for track one, that's just all my clips that I put together. I use Premiere mainly for color grading, syncing up like my clips, putting in B-roll. So my standard workspace on Premiere, I usually stay on the editing tab. I don't really switch between other ones. And I just have my color correction on the right side and then just like my pan crop keyframes on the left side. So I like to use After Effects for special effects. For example, like Hyperlapse is when I want to add in motion blur. And like this is an example uh, project template that I use if I wanted to use crumbling text effect where I would replace the wall with an actual picture of my own. It's really easy to use templates like this. You just open up the title layer and you just change the text inside. And why I learned After Effects is just that sometimes you can't do what you want in Premiere. So you just got to go over to After Effects, make that composition and put it back into Premiere. So for photo editing, I like to use Lightroom. I stick with the classic version. I think the new version UI like I'm just not too used to it or I'm not with it. This was just like a photo catalog of pictures I took at Seattle when I was visiting my friends over the summer. I guess I can just show you like a quick example of like how I would edit a photo. I'm not too good. I took one class for photography and I just like watched some tutorials on YouTube, but I'm trying to get more into it. I'm trying to like learn how to use disposable cameras and film it. So in this picture, Sony tends to shoot pretty bland. And for some reason I didn't have the raw file. So I had a JPG, which is kind of bad, but usually I just pull down shadows, put up lights and the standard S curve on tone curve. We can see the before and after here and I think the picture looks a lot nicer. All right, guys, and I just want to say thank you again to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. You can get Dashlane Premium for free for 30 days. And if you're interested on continuing with the product, you can get 10% off using my code EdwardSaw and the link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and let me know down in the comments below what do you have on your MacBook Pro. Peace.